Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, and the GOP came out with a mixed bag of some solid wins and unfortunate losses in yesterday's off-year elections. So we're going to run through the results in the various states, we're going to analyze the misses, and make sure to stick with me the very end of this video when I'm going to show you exactly what went wrong and what we can do about it. But first, gang, if you're frustrated with the state of things in our nation today, there is still time to join me and thousands of other patriots at this year's TexitCon. That's right. From November 9th to 12th, my team and I will be joining thousands of patriots in Waco, Texas, for a week of celebrating faith, family, and freedom in a movement that promises to be an arc for patriots if things go awry for us in 2024. I'll be doing a live meet and greet this year's conference and hope to see as many Texas Turley talkers there as possible. Let's set a new attendance record and show the rhinos and woke demons in D.C. that patriots have had enough and we are going to preserve a society of faith, family, and freedom one way or another. Click on that link in the description below and get your tickets now and I'll see you all in Waco. The big win coming out of yesterday was the Trump-endorsed Mississippi governor's race, where Tate Reeves, the Republican, soundly defeated the Democrat Brandon Presley, who, yes, is Elvis's second cousin. He was considered to be the up-and-coming Democrat in Mississippi. He was, you know, he looked like he was surging in the final weeks, but alas... Uh, for this Democrat, it was not to be. He was soundly defeated. And this gubernatorial win, of course, dovetails with the big governor win in Louisiana a few weeks back with Trump endorsed Jeff Landry, who won the governor's mansion there. So those are two back to back big MAGA wins. Lynn Finch, the Republican attorney general, she easily won reelection as well. In fact, all the Republican candidates in Mississippi stomped their Democrat opponents. So Mississippi remained solid red. And then there were the mixed results coming out of the state of Kentucky. All the Republican candidates down ticket won easily. All of them. Attorney General, Secretary of State, an all down ticket Republican sweep, except for the governor's race. The Republican gubernatorial candidate Daniel Cameron lost to the very popular Democrat governor, Kentucky's good old boy, Andy Bashir, who comes from a long established Kentucky political dynasty. He successfully won re-election. He was, of course, way ahead in the polls for the last several weeks, but Cameron began to surge towards the end and it looked very promising. He got Trump's endorsement, but there's a few things here. First and foremost, Cameron actually ran a really bad campaign. He's very inexperienced. That's unfortunate. But as I understand it, the Republican Governors Association, the RGA, who I detest, they starved Doug Mastriano of every penny of funding in Pennsylvania. They're a disgusting lot if there ever was one. They didn't give Cameron much help. I mean, they didn't Mastriano him, but they certainly didn't go all in with him either. He was vastly outspent by the Democrats. So that's first. Secondly, not only do popular incumbents win 99% of the time, as Red Eagle Politics always reminds us, Cameron's been closely associated with Mitch McConnell. Uh, he was McConnell's protege. He was his legal counsel in the Senate. Uh, a McConnell aide was at the heart of his campaign. I'm just saying there may be some real bitterness among the MAGA crowd associated with any against anyone associated with McConnell. Moreover, voter turnout in Kentucky was very low, only about 30%. So clearly Cameron did not inspire the vote to come out. So again, the GOP still dominates Kentucky. They have 80% majority in the legislative seats in Kentucky. But for whatever reason, they decided to stick with their good old boy Democrat for governor. Now, moving over to Virginia, that for me was very disappointing. The Democrats not only retained control of the Senate, they took control of of the state assembly, at least they're projected to, which was a massive loss for Glenn Youngkin. And that's absolutely key. Some of the more intellectually lazy and dishonest uh, DeSantis simps out there are trying to blame Trump for the losses last night, like they always do. But if that's the case, and you're going to have to blame Youngkin for Virginia. He was the face of the Republican Party throughout the state. So what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander, right? So we'll talk more about this at the end of the video in terms of who's really to blame for the losses here. But Virginia should have been, they should have seen a better result for the GOP. And unfortunately, they didn't deliver. Then in Ohio, voters overwhelmingly approved a referendum enshrining abortion rights and access into their constitution. 
as a backlash against the overturning of Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court level. And typical of these referendums, it's unfortunately a radical one. It has a health provision that would allow abortions up until birth, which ironically most Ohioans oppose. So you can expect another referendum in 2024 that will propose limiting abortion most likely to the first trimester, something akin to the Dobbs Law in Mississippi. And that should pass if the pro-life messaging is on point. Ohio voters want abortion, but they also want limits. And so they're going to have to go back and forth with these various referendums before they find the equilibrium. In the state of Pennsylvania, the Supreme Court race, the Democrat Daniel McCaffrey soundly defeated Republican Carolyn uh, Carluccio. Unfortunately, the Pennsylvania Republican Party is in absolute shambles right now. It's a mess. They're a rhino establishment mess. I witnessed it firsthand with the Mastriano campaign. The Republican establishment is hated by rural populist patriot voters in Pennsylvania. And we saw it last night. They're just not coming out to vote for the GOP. So with all of that said, what really happened last night? Is it Trump, as DeSantis simps want us to believe? Is Trump to blame for these losses? I mean, that's all they've got, so they're just pushing that. Is it the pro-life movement? Others are thinking that and that some, uh, you know, abortion was what was really on the ballot last night. I would argue when all is said and done that the big loser in all of this is once again the establishment hack, Ronna McDaniel, the head of the RNC. McDaniel is an incompetent disaster. And the reason for that is she has yet to figure out how to tap into the rising populist vote that is thoroughly pro-Trump, but emphatically anti-Republican. This is absolutely key for us to get, and this is why I don't think we have to worry about 2024 as long as Trump is on the top of the ticket. But Republicans are learning once again the hard way, just like in 2022, Trump's base is not the Republicans' base. Just because Trump wins a state or a county doesn't mean a Republican is going to win it. And this is what Ronna McDaniel has yet to understand. I mean, look at the latest from Ohio, gang. A state Trump won by 10 points. Biden is beating DeSantis. I'll say that again. Ohio, a state that Trump won twice by 10 points. It has a Republican trifecta, both House state legislature, um, both houses of the state legislature, their governorship. Super majority in legislature, all Republican. That state is going blue if DeSantis is the nominee. Trump's base is not the Republican base. It can be, but the Republicans are going to have to go through a major political renovation. They're going to have to completely turn their backs on the neocon Bush coalition that is dead. The counties in Kentucky that went overwhelmingly for Trump in both 2016 and 2020 did not go for Cameron. This is a unique problem that Ronna McDaniel appears totally incapable of resolving. Trump is a third party candidate who won a major party nomination. And so just because a county or state overwhelmingly votes in favor of that third party candidate does not mean they're going to vote for the major party. The Republican Party is going to have to do some major voter outreach like Scott Pressler is doing if they're going to build the bridges necessary to ensure that Trump voters automatically become their voters. Until then, if Trump is not on the ballot, the Republicans are going to continue to suffer from a turnout problem. That's it, both in terms of mail-in ballot participation and election day participation. If Republicans don't initiate Massive turnout drives. We're going to continue to see disappointing results like this. Populists are embracing Trump, but they're rejecting the GOP. We've got to get rid of Ronna McDaniel and find someone who can bridge that gap. Are you ready to join the resistance? Because I'm leading a group of 
dedicated, courageous patriots who can lead a spearhead into the heart of the secular globalist establishment. We punish Bud Light and Target, driven CNN and the legacy media to near bankruptcy, forced BlackRock to backtrack on ESG, and now we're seeing our conservative-dominated Supreme Court ending affirmative action and protecting religious liberty. In my Insiders Club, I show you concrete steps to take locally and online that will only keep this mass uprising going until the battle is won. Don't wait. Click the link in my description below and join my Courageous Patriots Insiders Club today.